Mrs. Honeybee. The water is great, isn't it, boy? Excellent doggy paddle, Harold. Melody B, we're going swimming today. Jump in. The water is perfect. Your swimming is so pretty. It reminds me of a butterfly. Funny you say that. One of my butterfly friends taught me this stroke in swim called the butterfly. <laughs> I want to try. That stroke is more of a frog, I think. I'm a frog. Watch. Who will win in a race between a butterfly and a frog? Definitely the frog. Hey, you're using your wings. Frogs don't have wings. Did you use some of Roger Robot's waterproofing on your wings, Melody Bee? you'd have some left over. Whoa! Roger, you're so glossy. I'm glistening. Take a look at me. I'm proud to announce that Roger Robot is now fully waterproofed. Go on, Roger. Jump in. Um, won't that wash off my waterproofing? It's so nice up here in the air. The water will dull my radiance. It'll do the opposite, actually. Your shine will probably make little rainbow prisms in the reflections. Wow, Roger, you're made of rainbows. Jump in, jump in. We have the diving board ready, Mr. Honeybee. Why don't you show him your best swan dive? One swan coming in. Woohoo! You look just like a swan, Mr. Honeybee. Excellent dive, my dear. How about a cannonball? Whoa, that was a huge splash. I'll set up my beach chair and umbrella way back here, out of the splash zone. Roger. You need to put that waterproofing to good use. You yourself asked for it. For security purposes, not gallivanting purposes. You should do a hive dive with Roger, Mr. Honeybee. The diving board has an elevator in it, right? Sure does. Do you mean a high dive, Melody Bee? What did I say? Hive dive. Tomato, tomato. Let's see the high dive. One hive dive. Hi, Dive, coming up. Let's see. Where's the diving board remote? Roger, I see you. <laughs> you cannot hide that remote. Come on. What's there to fear but fear itself? Would you like the list sent to your email? It's rather long. Come on, Roger. You're not even programmed to feel fear. You can change your shape and perform instant calculations, but not a trace of fear is in you, I promise. I'm not afraid, I'm cautious, logical. The geometry of the hive dive is way off, too steep. Whoa, look how high it goes. What's happening underwater, my dear? It looks like the pool floor is moving. It's opening up to allow for more clearance after the dive. I had the beavers down at the hardware store tunnel this pool to the Honey River. 
the honey river connects to the ocean so that means we have the ocean in our backyard now that's exactly what it means my dear you always say your favorite place is at the beach there's no need for a diving board to be that high up in the sky what if an airplane runs into us I still know some people down in air traffic control. I'll alert them. Additional diversion tactics downloading. <laughs> no more diversions, only dives. High ones. Put on your off-roading wheel to climb up the stairs, Roger. That roving wheel really helped in the cave that one time, remember? I remember. That's a good idea. Roger, you should use your off-roading wheel to get up. I have the distance between the ground and the diving board to find more diversions. Why aren't they downloading? This is really high off the ground. I love the ground so much. I miss it. Here we are, Roger. Here we are. My, this is fun. Meet you back on the solid, stationary ground, Mr. Honeybee. Not so fast, Roger. Okay. I'll meet you there slowly. Take your time. Roger, come on. This dive is nothing. You have everything you need to do it flawlessly. You've practiced smaller dives. You got this. You're not just any robot. You're Roger Robot. I'm Roger Robot, wobbling up really high off the ground. Roger Robot capable of anything I can envision. Okay, I'll dive with you, Mr. Honeybee. I know exactly what to do. That's the Roger robot I know and love. On the count of three? One, two, three. What? Roger. What kind of dive is that? The one where I turn myself into a raft and enjoy a nice peaceful float down to the water, where I once again float. Ah. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. Excellent transformation, Roger. Climb aboard, everyone. Get us to the Honey River, please, Roger. Let's go see some honeybees. This still life of a fruit bowl needs a bit more color. Maybe some extra bright red highlights for the strawberries. Oh, and the apple. The grapes are looking scrumptious, reddish purple and plump. What else do we have? A bunch of bananas, that looks good. An orange with enough detail to see the little dimples on the peel. Oh, that line needs a little extra brightness. And of course, little pink flowers around the outside of the bowl. Ta-da! What do you think of my masterpiece, Harold? What do you mean something is missing? <laughs> Harold... Is this how you asked to have your portrait painted, boy? I don't think we have time. We have the art exhibition any minute. Oh, speaking of, I better let Mr. Honeybee and Melody Bee know we need to leave soon. Mr. Honeybee, my dear, 
Are you almost done in the garage? The art exhibit is about to start. Just about done, dear. One last... Done. Okay. Now I need to test it out really quick. Where's Melody be? She must be upstairs still. Last I saw, she was in my writing room, sewing something. Harold, could you please go get Melody B for us? Come inside and see my painting, Mr. Honeybee. I love it. Wow, it's beautiful, my dear. The colors are so vivid. It looks like I can reach right in and grab a piece of fruit to eat. <laughs> Actually, it makes me hungry. I need to grab a snack for the exhibition today. It's done! It's done! It's done! Everyone, cover your eyes for the big reveal, please. Yes, even you, Harold even though you've already seen my costume. Paws up and eyes closed. You're getting a re-reveal. Our eyes are covered. We're ready. Here I come. You made your own costume of? Of my favorite animal on the planet. You're a platypus. Finally. It's like... A dream come true. Oh, I see. You used Harold's fluffy squeaky toy for a tail. <laughs> Very clever, Melody V. Well, I used what I found lying around. You know what they say. Necessity is the queen bee of invention. Is that what they say? Yep. Everyone. It's all the buzz around the hive right now. What did you need to test with Melody B, my dear? Oh, how could I forget? Yes, I made you some goggles, Melody B, that you can share with Harold. Aww, that's so sweet of you, Mr. Honeybee. I've always wanted goggles. Did I want goggles? You didn't know you did, but you do. Watch. See the painting Mrs. Honeybee did of the fruit? Yes. It's lovely, Mrs. Honeybee. Why, thank you, Melody Bee. What about you, boy? Okay, now, put these on and look again. <gasps> Whoa! What is that on the apple and the strawberries? That's the color red, Melody Bee. As a bee, your eyes exchange the color red for about a hundred shades of purple. It's even more beautiful than the usual dark gray of strawberries. <gasps> Take a look, Harold. Wow, my dear. Is this your art project? It sure is. I made kaleidoscope goggles that show all the colors. Even the ones we can't see, Mrs. Honeybee. Art is certainly not limited to painting. It can be sewing, fabrication, and even deconstructing things. I'm so excited to show our little honeybees your creation. Come on, we're just in time for the art exhibition. The artists are lining up with their creations. Mr. Honeybee, are you playing video games in the reclining theater seats? This humongous screen isn't just for us. We have little honeybees that'll be here any minute for the tournament. Oh, oh, no, uh, I wasn't really playing video games. Harold. I would never play without you. On purpose, I was testing all the chairs and controllers. I have to make sure they work. Quality assurance. 
Roger Robot and I were working on it together. Don't be silly. We did that earlier, remember, Mr. Honeybee? I have the assessment right here. Roger, shouldn't you be somewhere else? Assuring the quality of something? Nope, I'm all done with inspections. You have to remember, it was right before we personally played each game. It took us hours. We walked around the perimeter of the arcade, tested all of the billiard and card tables, and I clobbered you at a game of darts. I don't remember that. Sorry, it must not have happened like that. I do seem to remember a chess match that I won. That was right before I out balled you 80 to 50. You double checked the Mario Kart controllers twice. You've already confirmed that all 50 controllers are ready for action. And each of the games have been tested. Oh, yeah, that's right. What was I thinking? <laughs> uh, I was just making sure the high resolution wall-to-wall -wall screen was ready. It's going to be the main attraction right here in the center of the arcade. It has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. That was it, wasn't it, my dear? Screen testing. It wasn't that you were playing that game where you roll around and gather stuff into a big ball to remake the cosmos? That's why there's a big ball of stuff on the screen right now. You're rolling right through a garden, picking up flowers. I do love that game. I was screen testing. I am happy to report that this screen has been thoroughly tested. And this private video game theater arcade we built is amazing. Yeah, it is. But I kind of crashed a little bit on the racing game. I think the whole game itself might have crashed. But I think it's okay. You might want to check on it, though. How did you break the whole game? Is the screen stuck on the menu? I think I may have pushed all the buttons at once. Whoops. But these gaming chairs? <gasps> They're so cozy. This is way more my speed. And they recline. I could nap in them. But this screen, wow we It makes everything so realistic. Is that flower real or just on the screen? I think I'm dreaming. I need to get that flower. I'll buzz over real quick and be right back. No, Melody Bee. The flower is on the screen. It's not real. It's so bright and big. I can't smell it though. Why can't I smell it? It's not real, Melody Bee. Go slower, you're going to... Crash into the screen. Are those antennas of yours just for show? How did you not pick up on the electrical frequencies? You will need a full diagnostic now. Look at your wings. They're all bent out of shape. I have no time to spare. Ugh. I was never good at video games. That much is clear. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's bring in the gamers and let the games begin. Mr. Honeybee, my dear, did you hear that? I do. Is someone tapping? The show isn't supposed to start yet. We still have to get the stage ready for our little honeybees. Let me check behind the curtain. Maybe someone is squeezing in some last minute rehearsal. Ta-da! 
isn't tap the best? It's music and dancing at the same time. I love tap. I love all styles of dance, really. It's so important to express yourself, and dancing helps with that. But if I had to choose a favorite, I'm more of a ballerina, <laughs> full of elegance and grace and pirouettes. Watch this. Whoa, <gasps> Mrs. Honeybee. <laughs> that, that was beautiful. How do you balance on your toes like that? They make special shoes and everything. More special than tap shoes? There are different kinds of special. It's not a contest. It's a talent show. I'm more of a freestyle guy. Mr. Honeybee, you're so funky. The funkiest. All the data is in, and after a quick analysis, Roger Robot, the resident data analyzer, says that it's yet to be determined who is the funkiest. But <clears throat> it's obvious who is the smoothest. Salsa, anyone? Whoa, Roger. That was pretty smooth. And I thought you'd be more of a do the robot kind of guy. <laughs> oh, oh, I can do that. Me too. I would dance no such thing. <sighs> I will see myself to my seat to wait for the real dancing. Speaking of stage, I can see our little honeybees lining up backstage. The show's about to start. I call front row. Me too. Break a leg, my little honeybees. <gasps> Mr. Honeybee, how could you say such a thing? He didn't mean it, everyone. Keep all your legs intact. <laughs> no, Melody Bee. It's just the same. It means good luck. Oh, because those words put together usually mean you want their leg bones to break. No, it's like, uh, it's a thing we say to performers. Some words don't mean what they actually, uh, never mind. I'll explain it later. Mr. Honeybee, my dear, is the announcer mic ready? It's ready to go, my dear. Is this thing on? Ah, I suppose it is. Ballerinas. Are you ready backstage? Mr. Honeybee, my dear, please cue the ballet music. Our ballerinas are ready. for the trampoline part. Me too, Melody B. We'll be able to fly just like you. Look how tall the ceiling is from the outside. We're gonna jump so high. Mrs. Honeybee loves trampoline parks. Hey, where is she? Come to think of it, I haven't seen her in a while. Maybe she's inside already? Melody Bee, Mr. Honey Bee, Harold. I hear her, but I don't see her. Up here. She's jumping through the ceiling. <gasps> Whoa. I'll buzz up there to see what's going on. 
A melody B. Look how high we're jumping in here. Why is there a hole in the ceiling? So we can jump even higher. Hello. Mr. Honeybee, I'll meet you inside. I'm going through the ceiling like Mrs. Honeybee. You're going through the what? The ceiling, my dear. Hurry. Our little honeybees have already started on the high bars. I'm coming. Here I come. Mr. Honeybee, Harold, Melody Bee, the bus is here. Coming, my dear. I just need to grab my calculator. What do you need that for? Just do the math in your head. Not all of us can do calculus without a calculator, Roger. Really? Seems like a design flaw if you ask me. Why don't you just think about it better? Math just happens. Maybe that's because your head is a calculator, Roger. What? I'm coming, Mrs. Honeybee. What is she talking about, Mr. Honeybee? Well, when I was making your head, I did have a calculator installed. She's kind of right. I am a calculator? Whoa! This calculator doesn't even work. Roger, pop quiz. What's 432 divided by 5? 86.4. What's the slope of the line tangent to the y-intercept of the parabola y equals x plus 2 squared minus 4? Four. 4. All right. You're coming to school with us today. Who needs a calculator when you have Roger Robot? <laughs> Will there be other calculators there? Oh, yes. Tons. Let's go. I'm coming too, Mrs. Honeybee. The more the merrier, Roger. We have so many little honeybees to see at school today. Here we come. Today is going to be so much fun. Oh, look! The playground is full. Mr. Honeybee, have you seen any sign of the opposing team yet? Not yet, my dear. I'm on the lookout, though. We usually hear them before we see them. That is how they got their name. That's true. They sure do live up to that name, don't they? Midnight Ruckus. Am I late? Am I late? I'm so sorry. I was looking for my lucky coin to use for the coin flip that starts the game. Did, did you not find it? I couldn't find it anywhere. <gasps> what does it mean? If you lose your lucky coin, oh no. The coin is probably just hiding somewhere. You'll find it. It's not a gnome in Melody B. It doesn't mean anything. What if we lose because I lost the lucky coin that would have brought us all the luck the Honey Beehive soccer team needs to win against the Midnight Ruckus? Wait, why is it so quiet? Why is there no ruckus? Are they not here yet? Not yet. No sign of them. I have time. I'll search my pom-poms. Sometimes things get stuck in the little stringies. Melody B, I really don't think the honeybee hive full of little honeybees needs any luck. These are the best soccer players the world's ever seen. That is true. Phew, what was I thinking? We don't need luck. We have skill and heart and dedication. Exactly. And besides, whenever I find myself wondering 
about all the what ifs, I drop the letter F and focus on what is. Less ifs, more is. Instead of what if, focus on what is. Got it. That is a lot of ruckus. They're here. I never understand why they don't just walk through the open gate. Why do they have to climb the fence? Maybe walking through the open gate isn't loud enough? Yeah, maybe that's it. They must really like noise. And they're very good at making a lot of it. <laughs> Melody B, you said you don't have your coin. I don't have a coin either. Me neither. It looks like the Midnight Ruckus have a coin. Theirs should work, right? Do we trust it, team? Yeah, I think we can. Heads. Honeybee Hive kicks off, Tails, Midnight Ruckus. Psst, Mr. Honeybee. Check to make sure it's not double-sided. You never know. I did lose the lucky coin we usually start our games with. You have to make sure. <laughs> it's got both heads and tails. This is a fair coin. I made sure. Okay, here goes. Heads, that's us. Who needs luck? We have honeybees. Mr. Honeybee, did you get the equipment bag from the garage? I thought it was packed up in the car when we left. Mr. Honeybee? Where'd you go? Melody Bee? Harold, do you see them anywhere? Mrs. Honeybee, run! There's a monster! It's coming! A monster? At the sports park? Yes! Oh, yes! Trust me, it's it's some kind of sports monster. We we gotta get out of here. It's heading to our car. What what monster? Where's Melody be going? I thought we were going together. Phew. It's hot under this helmet. Mr. Honeybee, is that you? What are you wearing, my dear? Is that? All of our sports equipment. <laughs> I wanted to be prepared for all of the Olympic games we're gonna to see today. I have a football helmet, softball glove, hockey pads, oh, and you can't even see my honeybee jersey under it all, but it's there. You are really putting the fanatic back in sports fan, Mr. Honeybee. Wow. Here, you forgot your tennis and badminton rackets and your lacrosse stick. Thanks, Roger. Actually, can you hold the rackets for me? I also have my bike for the cycling races. <laughs> I think there's been a misunderstanding with Melody B. Roger, can you let her know that Mr. Honeybee isn't a sports monster? <laughs> Melody B, Melody B, it's safe to come back. That's not a monster, just a fanatic. A what? That sounds pretty monstrous. Can be, but no. Just a harmless sports fan. It's Mr. Honeybee. Mr. Honeybee? Why are you dressed up like a monster? I'm not. 
I'm ready for all the sports we're going to see at the Honey Bee Olympics. This sports park has volleyball nets, softball diamonds, a track, tennis courts, mountain bike trails. We're going to see it all. I'm so excited to see the tennis players and some skateboarders in the skate park if we're lucky. What's your favorite sport, Roger? Um, data analysis. Is that a sport? For a robot it is. What's a bee's favorite sport? Um, us honeybees are naturally very enthusiastic. So obviously, I love the one sport that all other sports rely on, cheerleading. Ooh, I like that. We can cheer all of our little honeybee athletes on. Exactly. I brought enough pom-poms for everyone, even you, Roger. Oh, joy. My dear, aren't you going to get a bit warm under all that equipment? We have our water cooler. I, I think I'll be okay out here. I have one hand free for pom-poms, though. Hand them over. Let's go see some honeybees! This concert is going to be incredible. I'm so excited for it and for our seats. Can you believe how good our view is, Mr. Honeybee? These seats are perfect. We're in the front row. It's going to be an excellent show. Just look at all the instruments and microphones that are set up for the musicians. What was that, Harold? Really? That's so many. My dear, what's he saying? Guess how many instruments there are in the entire world. Hmm, how many instruments? The entire world? 50? What was that? <laughs> I think the tube is trying to tell you that your first guess is wrong, my dear. Oh, okay. Well, hmm, I guess 700 instruments in the entire world. More than that? More than double that. 1,500 instruments. What was that? The correct answer. Oh, and I think that was a xylophone. Wow, 1,500 different kinds of instruments. Wait, does that number include a voice as an instrument? A voice? Like someone singing? Yeah. That should be an instrument, right? The xylophone says so. It must be true. That seems like a difficult instrument to learn because you can't technically see it. I'd say so. Maybe the voice is the most difficult instrument to learn. The tuba says no, my dear. Why does the tuba get to decide? Maybe because it's the biggest instrument? And I think the violin is more widely accepted as the most difficult instrument to learn. Most professional violin players start learning when they're only four years old. See? Told you. Who's playing those instruments? How is it deciding which answers are right or wrong? Roger Robot, is that you? Is it Melody B? It's me, Mrs. and Mr. Honeybee. <laughs> there are so many instruments backstage ready for the concert. Did you know there are more than 1,500 instruments worldwide? Yes, I was on the tuba back there, Mr. Honeybee. The tuba couldn't have known the right answer. 
the tuba did know the right answer? <laughs> I think that's Roger Robot on the trumpet. Hear ye, hear ye. Roger Robot has a joke for you all. What is a rabbit's favorite kind of music? Hmm. What is it? Hip-hop, of course. <laughs> oh, Roger. I have one for you. There was only time for one joke in the program. The show is about to start. There's always time for one more joke. What is it, my dear? I sense a robot joke coming on. What is a robot's favorite music? Techno. No, but maybe. Heavy metal? Ding, ding, ding. Hey, where's the instrument for the correct answer? He knows I'm aligned with the bunnies when it comes to music. See? Ooh, I'm so excited to have courtside seats to this basketball game. It's gonna be a good one. Me too, Melody B. We even get to watch the players warm up. I think Mr. Honeybee and Roger Robot are already here. I don't see them in our seats. Why are they on the court? Hmm, I don't know. It looks like they're measuring something on the court. Mr. Honeybee? Roger? What are you guys doing? We are on the brink of a mathematical equation that makes a slam dunk every single time. It's going to revolutionize basketball as we know it. Is making a slam dunk, like, difficult or something? Difficult? It's the hardest shot to make. Don't even get me started on basketball probabilities. We'll be here all day. It takes years of practice, Melody B. Years. Practice? Practice? Practice. I'm a franchise B. There's no need for formula. Why are we talking about practice? Hey, that's not fair. I made a slam dunk, didn't I? There are no species-specific rules in basketball, are there? Well, uh, no. I don't... Didn't think so. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Honeybee. Let's get to our seats. We're done here. <laughs> Maybe you can devise a formula... For a three-pointer, Mr. Honeybee, Melody Bee's dunking skills wouldn't work on three-pointers. <sighs> Good idea, my dear. I guess it's back to the drawing board, Roger. Roger that, Mr. Honeybee. Always remember... Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs> <laughs>